Hey, Jenny. Hey, Johnny. Come on in to my casa. Thank you. I chose not to ask Johnny why he was wearing sunglasses inside his house, but I did ask him if he'd been songwriting at all during the pandemic. Is that why I'm here? Because you've been writing songs? He just missed me able to see me again. I do miss you. Um, hopefully it won't be another year and a half. No, I mostly write in bed. In bed? Yeah. And uh, when you wake up or? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a morning person in terms of creating stuff. Huh. General routine is get up about seven thirty or eight. Uh -huh. Eat breakfast, have a piece of toast. What kind of toast? Uh, it's good. It's healthy toast. <laughs> I forget the name of it. And then I go for a walk with Jennifer over walk for an hour. Jennifer's your sister. My sister. One of your sisters. One of four. And I come back, shake and bake, you know what I mean? Uh huh. And start working on some music stuff. Nice. Are we doing this thing? Mm -hmm. I'll play it. To the best of my ability, mm -hmm. and then I'll talk about how it came to be. I was born in the country, amongst the woods and the deer. Daddy was a farmer, my brother was queer. The land was unforgiving. Mom and Dad were sad It was hard for me But for my brother it was really bad His name was Jim I called him Jimmy He had a head full of ideas And a heart full of Jimmy He was different Than all the others I really love my baby brother Mama planted peaches and Daddy planted corn I've been picking cotton since before I was born We worked side by side From dusk to dawn Jimmy knew the words of all the popular songs. He looked at me and I'd look away. I didn't want to hear what Jimmy was trying to say. He was different than all the others. I love Baby brother Mama was silent Dad said not a word It was the things unsaid The brother Jimmy heard Mama died Daddy soon after Lord I miss The sound of he got a place of his own Just south of town He stays to himself He don't much come around He was different Than all the others I really do Thank you. That was beautiful. So, there are
His people. Uh, first of all, I say, I want to say anybody can write a song, and anybody can write a good song, but it's really hard to write a great song. And part of the problem is that when you write a good song or a song, it won't live up to the song that you have heard, like Stardust or Angel of Montgomery or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you look at your song, you'll see all the things in it that aren't like that, and you'll focus on that. What I'm saying is focus on all the stuff in your song that aren't like what you want it to be. Wait, mistakes or stuff. What's unique to that song in you and then develop from there, mm -hmm. you know? Shut off your inner critic and your inner musicologist. So that's my general theory. Uh, on this song, and the way I normally write songs most of the time, is I'll just get a couple of lines in my head that seem like they will lead somewhere else. You know, if you see a good, like a novel, best of times, worst of times. Mm -hmm. Well then, you just follow that thread. So if you got two lines that maybe, that are like that, or four lines maybe. So I had these two lines to start out with. I was born in the country, most of woods and a deer. Daddy was a farmer, he found me queer. So I had that, but I couldn't really get any further. And I couldn't figure out why, because I liked those lines. But then I realized it was point of view. It's got to be a point of view that, that you can follow through on. And like, I've always been a really normal person, very average person. So I was never queer in either of them, queer as in being gay or queer as being quirky. So I couldn't follow through on that. Oh, you know. But you do know people like that, so that I could go. I was born in the country amongst the wolves and the deer. Daddy was a farmer and my brother was queer. So after that in the song, we can just unfold. Because it's from my point of view, you know, my relationship with my brother and our relationship with our parents. You can just get those first two lines and then the thing will just unfold itself, you know, don't, and maybe it'll unfold itself in unique ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, this song is just fairly straightforward narrative. But. So that's about all I know <laughs> songwriting wise. That's it. Ain't that hard? Just one little groove that you can play with one little chord. Mm -hmm. You know, learn a, a D chord. I really liked what you said about everybody can sing, everybody can write a song. Well, I didn't say everybody can sing. Didn't you not say that? No. All right, that's no, what I, no, no, I, I, just, I, no, no, no. no, everybody cannot sing. That's All right. but, but you don't have to be able to sing to write a song. Uh, everybody can write a song? Yeah, I mean, because mm -hmm. it's just, it's so, it seems daunting at first, I think, to people, but, or to some people maybe, but you can play something on guitar so easily. I could teach somebody in two hours to play yeah. one chord 
and I could coax the lyrics out of them because it's just it's just words, you know. Mm -hmm. And mostly you want to rhyme them, so you're pretty stuck. So you know, if you said you know, went to the store, I bought a gun. Okay, now you're already stuck. Right. You got gun there. Uh -huh. So what? We got fun. Honey bun, I went to the store, bought a gun, got a soda pop and a honey bun. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're, you know, the lyrics, the, you know, I mean, a great song will have like great rhymes. Yeah. But they don't, they don't really need to be. There's a lot of great mm -hmm. songs got stupid rhymes. Do you remember the first song you wrote and when that was? Yeah, actually. I just put it back in our set that Mike and I are working on. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, this is the first thing I learned to play on guitar at all. And when was that? Were you? I don't know, like 40 or something. 40, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a ridiculous age. The only really interesting thing about me is that I started so late. I mean, that's I'm mean, not interested, but unique. You need to never, you know. But the song was. My father was a worker. A union man, you know. They nailed him to the cross. Gambled for his clothes. So I had that, you know, because I was really deeply into the blues, and that's like standard, uh, you know, I'm a man. It's basically, I'm a man. And then, for me at that time, like I didn't, I didn't feel like I could really carry off the I'm a man lyric, you know. Well, I'm a man, way past 21. You know, just like, I didn't feel manly to the extent like Muddy Waters was manly. Uh -huh. So then I just, well, fuck it, I'll just put my own lyrics on it. So that was your way in? That was the first in. song I wrote, you know. Uh-huh. Um, and it really hasn't got, you know, if I played a set, this would probably be everybody's favorite song from the set. Wow, that's interesting. It hasn't been... I'm not a better songwriter now than I was pretty much right uh -huh. from the beginning, which uh -huh. was really surprising to me because I always believed it brought, you know, I always sort of believed in progress, you know. Yeah. You do something more and more, play guitar, I thought it would become, you know, I don't play guitar any better than I did like 20 years ago. It's like, it's really funny. Well, I think a lot of things change too with once you like for me, I didn't set out to be a performer, to sing in front of people. Um, really? No, that's not what I set out for. Did you set out for that when you sang oh, that? Totally. Wrote that for, yeah. Does, does it change it for you having an audience and thinking how the audience might react? Oh yeah, it's mm -hmm. just not any. It's not a song. To me, until it's performed, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's just, it's just fun. Well, even if it doesn't necessarily go that well, you know, yeah. you don't feel like you really did well, or, or nobody else thought you did well. Even within that, it's fun. That's a good thing for you know. Yeah. That's a good thing musicians that have that a lot of jobs don't have, you know. That's right. And when I got into it. You know, because I was pretty, like I say, I was pretty old. I saw that movie, um, what was that movie, The Big, The Last Waltz. Oh, yeah. And I went to see that, huh. you know. And I thought, wow, man, these guys, they get paid like crazy money, I know. They're having a lot of fun. And I, yeah. And then I thought, and it looks really easy. I don't really see anybody up there doing anything I don't think I could do, although I had never done anything. 
I had never sung, never played a guitar, never done anything musically. And I looked at it, and those great performers, I thought, I could do that. Yeah, that's so great. <laughs> and then Dave and I went down to the store the next day, the old McNeil's, and he bought a bass, and I, or I bought a bass, and he bought a guitar. That's amazing. And I bought my little sister a drum set. Um, and, you know, I mean, my confidence level, based on nothing, was just amazing. And then it's just gone, you know, the more, yeah. you know, the better, in a sense, I've gotten. Yeah. My confidence will never reach that peak again to look at, like, you know, Yo-Yo Ma. I'll say, yeah, I think I'll play the fucking cello. I could do that. What? What's he got that I don't? So, well, he had that moment too, maybe, you know, at a different time in his life. That yeah, but he, was, but he was right. <laughs> <laughs> he was completely right. Now, you also, you write poetry. Did you do that before? I did that before and then got out of it for the reasons that we're talking about. It's like I realized huh. I really looking for immediate gratification. I want to do something that I want people to laugh or clap or something, right. you know. Yeah. I want to be the center of attention, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> Just yeah. all that kind of, and it's like, and it's not appropriate to be that way, like at your family reunions. Like, you know, look at me, I have center of attention, blah, blah, blah. But as a performer, when you're on stage, it's like, look, I'm on the one on stage, all I should be on me and should be hanging on every word. It's appropriate. In a social situation, it's not appropriate. So I was able to like take it out of my social life, which right. people really sometimes found obnoxious. And I felt it was suspect and put it in a professional thing and get paid. The get paid part is tougher than I thought. But yeah. But the rest of it, yeah, it fulfilled some very, some needs in me that are very uh, just egocentric kind of thing. That, that, I was, that, that it's appropriate to be when you're performing. Mm -hmm. When you're performing, it's all right to be Judy Garland. But then Judy couldn't leave it on the stage, you know. I think Judy had to be Judy 24-7 and eventually mm -hmm. that's rough. You know. If the songwriting and performing and singing was taken away from you, would that affect you emotionally, physically? The performing aspect would. Like songwriting, like I wrote, Like the first few years of, like all of those books are lyrics. These guys. Yeah, all of those. So when I first started, I used to write lyrics constantly, you know, mm -hmm. and wrote so many that about seven, you know. I just started reusing them. So for like the last like seven albums, I just used lyrics that I'd written like 10 years ago or mm -hmm. something. Because I got to the point where I don't really write lyrics unless I have to. Like, so I just made a new album. So like six months before I was gonna start making the album, I just sit down and start writing again. So I can, I don't lose the ability but I don't do it anymore for, you know, before I used to do it just to write incessantly. And now it's like, if I could just be an instrumentalist, I would be happy. Mm -hmm. I think the thing I do best is write lyrics, but it's the thing that I care the least about. Kind of, you know. So someone who's never written a song, what would your advice be? My advice would be, well, this is assuming you can play a little bit of guitar or keyboard or something, which, which I'm saying, if you can do. Okay, if you can get that much.
much going on a guitar and then just listen or hear. Maybe you'll hear somebody else say something. That's fine. You'll take it off TV. Where you can get just a couple of lines that are sort of like, or those kind of lines where you think, gee, I wish I'd said that. Well, you didn't say it, but you can steal it and put it in your song. And then, like I was saying, it just will unfold from there. Mm -hmm. Any two lines are gonna lead you to another two lines. Don't edit yourself. Don't even worry if it rhymes. Don't worry about anything. Just play guitar and open your mouth and say things simultaneously, you know, yeah. and then edit it down later. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I didn't say everybody can sing. <laughs>